decided it would be good if everybody kind of introduced themselves, kind of told who they were associated with, so some of the people from one side, one clan, can kind of get to know people from the other clan. So I'll start with me. I'm, I'm Jerry Hooper. I'm father of the groom. You want to introduce yourself? <laughs> I think everybody here pretty well a few people, but I'm Kent Hooper, and I'm the one that's supposed to be marrying Carly. Just I was trying to get a reaction out of y'all, but uh, I'm married to tomorrow. Go ahead, Carly, introduce yourself, and then... Uh, I'm Carly, and I'm supposed to be marrying him tomorrow. <laughs> Our reaction was better. And then we'll, we'll go, we'll start with Carol here and we'll just go around the table this way and then we'll go to that table, that table, and that table. So. Um, I'm Kent's mom, Carol Hooper. Kent's older brother, Ivan Hooper. Hi, I'm Chanel. I'm Ivan's wife. I'm Salt Lake. <laughs> yeah. I'm Andrew Hunter, I'm uh, a close friend of Kent's from high school. I'm Mike Clone. I think it would be well if they stood up. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That way we can see. It's easier to see. Yeah, Mike stands up. Sorry. Let's see your good looking face. I'm Mike Clone. I'm his boss, pretty much. I'm also your son. That's so sweet. I'm his wife, Shanna. You're his boss. There you go. I'm Leslie Hooper, Kent's sister. I'm Kelly Hooper, I'm Kent's sister in law. I'm Jeff Hooper, Kelly's husband, Kent's brother. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> I'm Neil Hooper, and I'm the one that's marrying Corley. I mean, you're supposed to. <laughs> He's the baby. I'm Becky Blue. Carly's mother. <laughs> I'm Randy Blue, Becky's husband. And Carly's father. Father of the Which one's your father? Yeah. Over here. Wait. I'm Anne Neston. And my husband's Jim. And we're Carly's grandparents. And soon we'll be kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kirsten, and um... What's your last name? I'm <laughs> 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 uh, Nelson, and I'm a friend of both of Carly's family. More Carly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Taylor Nelson, one of Kent's friends. And, uh, I guess I like Carly too, so I'll, you know, say... <laughs> I'm Gary Sheehan, I'm one of Kim's college friends. Yeah. Um, I'm Aubrey Chapman, and I live with Carly up in Utah. And you're friends. And I'm her friend. <laughs> I'm Chris Tarver, and I'm the only one here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm friends with everyone. Thanks for the free meal. I was wondering who that was. <laughs> 
I'm Mike Bluth, and I'm uh, Carly's favorite uncle on the blue side. I know some of her other uncles. <laughs> I'm Jill Bluth, and I'm Carly's aunt by marriage. Who's her favorite uncle? <laughs> I'm Jean Bluth, and I am the mother of Randy. <laughs> and the, I, Carly is my, grand, my granddaughter. It took a little bit for her to claim that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, first of all, my wife's husband, uh, Bob Bluth the grandfather of Carly, and I claim one-fourth responsibility for this gathering. Just for that purpose. You get a fourth of the bill. I'm Brad Bennett. Uh, I'm Carly's uncle. That's Mike the friend. I'm Mike Cahill and I'm uh, dating Carly's sister. <laughs> I'm Carrie, Blue Carly's sister. Hi, I'm Carrie Blue Carly's sister. You guys already know me, so... Uh... <laughs> That's my brother. Huh? You're my brooder. Yeah, I'm Becky's brother. I'm Denise Bennett. I'm his wife. <laughs> I'm Teresa Crossland, and I'm a friend. Of both sides. I'm Kelly Bleep, and I'm Carly's favorite sister. <laughs> I'm Kristen. I'm Carly's sister. I'm Chad Withers. I'm married. Kristen, although Carly thought she was going to get me, but Kristen, uh, no, they fought it out, but uh, Kristen won, she's older. Yeah. Anyway, I was trying to come up with something original. I'm Melissa, and I'm Carly's cousin. I'm Dan Craner, and I'm Carly's aunt, Becky's sister. About this young couple. We'll go ahead and start with you. She's changed her mind. Well, actually, we've kind of run into a little bit of a problem. We were reminded of some of the things Carly's been, Carly had done in the past, and remembered she's still grounded. I'm getting married tomorrow. About to put it off. Well, it's um. You got it. Huh? There's stuff that are still trying to figure it out. Um, I guess it was last uh, spring. Uh, Kent said, "Hey, I'm going out to Carrie's graduation." Oh, that's a strange thing to do. <laughs> I knew Kent always liked Carrie, but not that, not in that way. But um, putting two and two together, I guess I sort of figured he kind of wanted to go out and see Carly. So uh, he was in all the family pictures <laughs> at the graduation. He figured out how to get in that deal. <laughs> but we um, we uh, had to move him out of their apartment after graduation. You, you remember that, Carrie? And uh, Becky pulled me aside. We were going up to the apartment. She said, now, Kent wants to talk to you about something. Be nice. <laughs> I said, what? She said, just be nice. <laughs> And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going to. She said, just be nice. So I uh, said, OK. So we went up there, and Ken said, hey, uh, President, uh, if we get a little second, I'd like to talk to you a little bit. And I thought, uh, OK. We probably won't have time, but if we do. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in this apartment, packing and moving, and, and packing and moving. We had <laughs> Becky's uh, folks there, and my folks there, and we had Carrie, and we had Kelly, and we had, I think Chad and Kristen were there. And Riley. Riley was there. <laughs> and Carly. 
Carly, you were there, and Ken. I didn't know how we were gonna, how I was ever gonna be able to get some time with Kent here. So, you know, if we went back in the bedroom and started talking, people would really pick up on stuff. So finally, I uh, said, "How about if I go down and pick up some Sonic um, limeades for everybody?" And uh, I said, "Anybody want a limeade?" Well, everybody wanted one, so. I said, okay, uh, uh, Ken, you want to go with me? And uh, he said, sure, sure, I'll go with you. Chad said, yeah, I'll go too. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, Chad, I'll just, I didn't want him to feel like I was leaving him out of anything, but I thought I'd better take Ken by himself. You know? <laughs> Chad just didn't want to go up and down those stairs and anyway, <laughs> stuff. So we got in the car. Chad has a real nice, uh, or I mean, Kent has a real nice uh, Honda Acura. And um, <clears throat> did we push it to get it going? <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, Betty broke the floor. So I thought. Betty did too. He was a little nervous, I think. <laughs> um, so he sort of got a little sentimental and things, told me that he would like to. Uh, with my permission. I think that was all fluff. Uh, asked Carly to marry him that weekend. He said he got in a ring and he had everything all planned out. So I uh, had promised I wouldn't tell Carly this. He didn't know about the ring and everything. Huh? So uh, I said, well, you know, it's all pretty quick. He had everything planned, every, even the answers. He said, well, here's the situation I'm, I'm up against. He says, we didn't exactly know where to live when the semester starts. You can't live in married housing without being married. I said, well, there you go. I guess you better get married. For, you know? As good a reason as any, you know? So I said, well, may as well just get married. He's, I said, well, could you just sort of maybe not get that apartment and you guys just go on and maybe later you get married after the semester is over or something like that. He says, now, President, <laughs> you know he's getting spiritual now. You wouldn't want to risk anything happening now, would you, President? <laughs> I said, you convinced me. <laughs> so... For some reason, I felt like I came out winning in that. <laughs> so, here we are. I think I've got a deal going, and all of a sudden, I look like I got took. You know? <laughs> well, really. Um, so I told Carly. She um, after she got engaged, I said, "Well, there's three things." I said, "You need to marry the right person in the right place at the right time." I said, "You guys got two out of three. She said, well, which one did I get? <laughs> I said, well, you're only a kid. But um, I guess we got over that point, too. So we're uh, grateful to be in uh, you know, a situation like this. I can't, I can't think of a finer, finer young man that, um, that could marry Carly than Ken. He's just about, he can't handpick someone. So we're just real thrilled to. He hooked into the Hoopers finally, and <laughs> Neil and I are going to be re related. <laughs> My old running partner, and uh, uh, grateful the Hoopers have raised such a wonderful, wonderful young man, and now we get a chance to sort of be with him for a long time. So appreciate it. <laughs> I even find the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not very good at this. Uh, Randy is very polished. Uh, he speaks every Sunday for hours and hours and hours. And I've had the privilege of sitting in on some of those hours and hours where he's speaking. So. It's Kent we're picking on, not me. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> he's smooth, but I have to make notes. See? So I'm, what I was, I was thinking of, um, as I've thought about this, I, I, I had a lot of different thoughts going through my head, but. I kind of came up with some phases of Kent's life that I was thinking of. You know, as a, as a parent, you know, I've, I've got 
six children, and every one of my children has certain traits or things that I wish I had had, you know. Some were better at something or other, you know, if they had put them all together and they'd made a real nice human being, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's things I've, I've, I've admired about in each of my children, and, and I've tried to think of some things, uh, yeah. but I, I came up with some phases of his life. I got uh, Phase one here that I wrote down was, I call it big and bright. When he was, he would, stand up. This is my runt, you know. He was big as a baby. He was bigger than all the other kids in school, and he's the biggest of my children, and he's, he's the baby. So look how much taller he is. Everybody's taller than me. Okay. So he was, he was big, but that kind of made him kind of a natural leader in school, and he was very bright. He got a lot of awards. Now, some of you probably won't believe this, so will you? But when he was in elementary school and stuff, he, was, he did really well in school. And then, then entered kind of like, you know, uh, phase two, which uh, I called uh, popular and plummeting. And the plummeting was the grades as he became popular. <laughs> and he replies to his popular. And, and in the meantime, he discovered that he was pretty athletic and he had a, a great throwing arm and ended up being uh, involved in, in sports and stuff. And that kind of helped him be popular too. But, so he entered into that kind of that uh, middle school era where he, he became popular and uh, and he was the and then he moved on into high school where he, he graduated into I think even more popularity. He became weren't you labeled like the class clown or something like that in the yearbook? Something like that, yeah. I was a sidekick. I was, <laughs> I was Robin. Partner in crime. <laughs> but you know, we talked to the we we got to talk to the principal and the teachers a lot during that those phases, but they all liked him in spite of some of the stuff he would do. And get, you know, he was a likable kid in spite of all of that. And he can—he's the kind of person who can—he can sell. And he sold you, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and he's been selling this last summer. He—he he can sell, and he so he sold him sold him on getting away with a lot of stuff that probably most of us couldn't have gotten away with. Um, and then phase three, I call uh, baseball and mud, because he, he was into baseball in high school, and when he wasn't in ba into baseball, he was out in the mud. And so it was like four wheeling, or and he was always working, trying to keep something running long enough to go out and kill it again on another weekend. <laughs> And Andrew helped him, didn't you? Uh, he was breaking my stuff, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he sold him a piece of junk, kept running, running and running. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, I don't know. I, I really, uh, really admired how some of the older kids in school would hang out with him, and he would be kind of the leader. He had some real leadership skills that, that I saw come out at that point in time. And, uh, and then, Phase four, I'm calling kind of, uh, he's kind of halfway through that phase right now. I'm calling it the mis mission and marriage, okay, where he finally was looking kind of towards the future and thinking and, and went off and I think had an, an awesome uh, mission experience and really matured and came back a, a little different young man than the one that went away, and I think that happens a lot, and it, it was good for him, and, and seemed to be much more focused in knowing what he wanted, and he didn't take any time, waste any time figuring out what he wanted when it got to, to Carly here, and uh, that happened pretty quickly, but it, it has with some of my other family members here, too. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> he's in that phase now. The mission part's over, the marriage part is over, and I had the privilege of sitting in the uh, upper room of the Logan Temple years ago and hearing President Kimball tell us that uh, any young man who had been on a mission and was 26 years old was a menace to the church. You needed to be married by the time you were 26, so <coughs> you're going to make it. <laughs> Nothing to worry about there. you got lots of room to spare. So now the next phase after uh, the, the mission and the marriage piece goes into place here, um, then is what I call the loving and learning phase. 
And uh, that's where really the learning comes for y'all. It's you know, loving, that's great. Enjoy all of that. But learn to love even better and longer. And learn to love the Lord and make him part of your life. And learn to love your work, whatever you, you do. And one thing I've admired about Ken is he pretty much knows what he wants to do. There's a lot of people still drifting around, wondering what they want to do trying to figure out what they want to be in life and uh, he's had a pretty clear vision for a number of years of the kind of area he'd like to work in. I think he'll be very successful with his skills there. Um, now one thing you're also going to have to learn as a return missionary, I'm sure, I, do you cook? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she does. You're going to have to learn, to, now I'm sure he could teach you, you know, probably volumes about how to cook macaroni and cheese, <laughs> being a return missionary, but uh, learn from each other, teach each other. And I actually, you know, I actually went ahead and made a toast here that I'm going to read uh, to Canton and Carly. I'm in, a, m many of you know, some of you don't, but I'm in the automobile business, so I'm kind of into the most things automotive at this point in my life. And so if you'll join me here with your glass of water or whatever you've got, empty glass. <laughs> I'm going to give you all a toast here. Um, this is to Kent and Carly as you begin your journey together down the highway of life. <coughs> May the love in your marriage be supercharged and full of high octane passion for each other. At work, may you know when to pass and know when to follow. Spiritually, may all your roads lead higher with God as your navigator. May you embrace children in your car seats and have many friends in your convoy. May smooth roads and the best of life and love pave your way through eternity together. To Kent and Carly. <laughs> Now, if anybody has any embarrassing stories they want to tell about Kent, we'll give him a few minutes. And I, I asked Andrew to, to share, maybe Mike, but the, I know time is, is late and there people have things to do. If you, if you, if you pass. You guys got to follow that action. Come up and tell him privately. about how great my father in law is, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just. Um, for those that do know me, uh, family's important to me, family and friends. I've learned that over the time. Um, I feel like our family is fairly close, and um, you know, I, I don't have any problems with my brothers or sisters or with death wishes or anything. <laughs> I, uh, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to, in my family, to let it grow a little bit here at this time and to be with Carly, to have her as my, as my wife. It's something that um, I would have never thought. I never thought would have would have happened, but I'm I'm blessed. I'm happy, and it's something that's that those that know the story about Carly and I. We only actually saw each other three times before we were engaged. And, uh, well, that, explains it. <laughs> that sounds pretty scary. That sounds pretty scary. He's a pretty good salesman, isn't he? <laughs> and that sounds pretty scary. But uh, when you know something's right, you know something's right. And I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world. The relationship that we've had time that we've spent away from each other and um, just how much I know I love being with her and, and uh, to have her in my life and just every moment that I get to be with her it just really makes me it makes me appreciate it and when I come home I think about the fact that I will get to come home to someone that I care about and that that she's always going to be there with me and for me and I hope to always be there for her and be a, a rock for her to always help her to not be a leader, but a lifter in her life to make her be the woman that she is and that she will be. Um, most of us here are members of the church, and our ultimate goal is to return and be with our Heavenly Father. And that's something that I know that Carly will definitely help me on that path through life to become a better person and to uh, strive to hopefully help y'all forget all the bad things that I've done in my life. <laughs> Carrie. <laughs> Uh, I'm grateful for the friendship that y'all have lent to me and for those that I don't really know that well that I'll get to know you better and uh, share our families together. So thanks for coming.
probably going to be a tour yeah. old video. Probably. This, by the way, folks, for the record, is the person who ruined this video for you all. <laughs> Happy wedding. <laughs> You're going to get to keep this to remember. <laughs> remember what a job was done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I took it from the invitation. Thanks, Dad. I know a good frame shop. <laughs>